What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Fedi and welcome to my channel. And today we are gonna talk about a post posted by a gentleman who goes by the name OK Temperature 4359 on a uh, popular subreddit, Dressless subreddit. And if you're a long-term hair loss sufferer, you probably know that Dressless is the most popular subreddit for males and females who are suffering from different conditions leading to hair loss. So I wanted to make this video to give my opinion about this gentleman's case, as well as to take it as an opportunity to clear some misconceptions, in my opinion, that a lot of users on this particular subreddit have on pyrolutamide. So try to watch the video with an open mind and uh, enjoy. So the post was titled Pyrolutamide Works, my experience including photos. And it was posted about 20, 19 hours ago, and it's been getting some heat ever since. So here are the before photos. So as we can see here, pretty minor uh, degree of hair loss in the vertex, as well as it looks like it's extending to the mid scalp. And um, we don't pretty much see any signs of hair loss in the hairline or in the frontal portion of the head as well as the uh, back portion of the vertex. We can see clearly in this picture that hairs in the posterior part of the vertex are pretty much non-responding to DHT, meaning they're pretty healthy. And uh, yeah. And unfortunately, the gentleman didn't provide us with any information about his details or his age, uh, at least. So we don't know whether to classify his hair loss as aggressive or non-aggressive. But um, nevertheless, we also know that um, the gentleman was taken, began taking pyrolutamide about seven weeks ago. I mean, he mentioned in another post that he started to take it about four weeks ago, but maybe that was a mistake. And he meant seven weeks ago because he, in this particular post in the comments, he responded several times that he has been taken pyrolutamide seven weeks ago. And uh, here are the after pictures. And these results, as put in by a lot of users on this particular thread, are so good to be true. You can go as far as to say they look unrealistic. So was this gentleman faking it? Was it, I mean, we know that it's under the same light conditions, but um, can pyrolutamide really deliver such results? And this brings me to the point that I wanted to talk about originally when I decided to make the video. Pyrolutamide is not as superior as you think to finasteride in terms of efficacy. I mean, just look at the results in the phase two clinical trials for pyrolutamide, where authors concluded that pyrolutamide had a hair count improvement about 21 hairs from baseline, and that's after using pyrolutamide five milligrams dose twice a day during the period of the study, which was 24 weeks. While we also know that finasteride delivered similar results as the average improvement from baseline and the hair count was about also 23 to 25 hairs in a square centimeter. So my point is there is no results or there is no improvement we would see from pyrolutamide we haven't already seen in finasteride. I mean, granted, some people respond differently to some uh, different treatments. So a person who didn't respond well to finasteride could indeed respond better to pyrolutamide. But still, seven weeks, you could only start to evaluate your hair loss improvement or the improvement in the hair shaft, diameter, or the hair count. Starting from three months is the number or the duration that a lot of people slash scientists came to an agreement on. So to start to evaluate your hair loss improvement on seven weeks and to give us such results, which pretty much look uh, unrealistic, is I think misleading to say the least. Plus the gentleman already mentioned in the comment section that he have been also taken finasteride and dutasteride, I think, minoxidil as well. He threw that in there and um, I don't know, maybe the combination of the three gave these results, 
or maybe there's something shady in this post, I don't really know. But um, this brings me to the third and the final point I wanted to prove or talk about in this video, and that is if pyrolutamide is not superior clinically in terms of improvement for uh, androgenic alopecia, why are we waiting for the phase three <laughs> clinical trials at all? I mean, we have finasteride, why are people um, waiting for this uh, treatment to be approved? Well, I really do think that there are two points pyrolutamide is superior to finasteride on. And the first point is the sexual side effects. I mean, we all know that sexual side effects is a major concern for finasteride users. And it's a big factor why a lot of users pretty much quit using finasteride or dutasteride or any 5-AR inhibitor. Uh, Pyrolutamide works on a different mechanism. It works on the androgen receptors directly. So uh, even in the phase two clinical trials, which we covered, by the way, on this video, you can find it here, uh, there were no incidents of side effects, not so ever. Uh, there were side effects linked to the topical administration of the drug. There was some rash, pruritus, I think, um, but there was no sexual side effects. So the value of pyrolutamide here is it can provide an alternative treatment for uh, hair loss sufferers who cannot use finasteride because of the sexual side effects. Also, the second point is that since pyrolutamide works on a different specter or a different mechanism of action, it can be used as an adjunct treatment for finasteride. That, of course, if you do not suffer from side effects of finasteride and you do not wish to discontinue taking the drug. So this was my take on uh, pyrolutamide works, my experience. I hope I am not misjudging the user posting this uh, thread. Also, please share in the comments section whether you have uh, other ideas or other remarks uh, about this particular post. And yeah, don't forget to like the video if you found it informative. Also, subscribe to the channel. And um, as always, stay safe.